are many preamp pedals available today on the market from brands like Tech 21, MXR, Aguilar, Ampeg, or even Darkglass, just to name a few most popular ones. I'm really sorry if I left out your favorite brand. We use them as DI boxes on stage or in studio to shape the tone of our bass or to better blend with the rest of the instruments. In addition to that, we expect these preamps to add their own secret sauce or character. We also need them to be sturdy, reliable, practical, to run on a classic 9 volt center negative power supply, for example. And easy to use because we don't want to waste our or anybody else's time, right? If they can include some special feature like a clean blend, a drive section, or a compressor, then we can imagine carrying around in our gig bag just in case this only one pedal. Last but not least, if this pedal is assembled by hand with quality components at a reasonable price, then... Welcome to the Weatherbase. One of my favorite pedals ever is the Equinox from Triton Lab. I used it in studio and live with other pedals. Actually, my first video review in this channel is about this pedal. I really like the notch function, which I'll get back to later on in this video. But most of all, the sound. So when Triton Lab announced that they were working on a new preamp with a notch filter, a low pass filter for the drive section, which is also on the Corsair, which is a pedal I already reviewed, a balanced DI output, and three parallel signal paths, clean, compressed, and preamp, I got really excited. But enough babbling, let's listen to the next song, and then we'll continue talking about the infinity and beyond. I had to say it. Infinity is not the only preamp to include a compressor. Here's a list of other preamps that do. The one in the Infinity is optical. There's a mini trim inside the pedal to allow you to cut or boost the input signal going through the compressor. So in case you use a low output pickup, you can boost the signal. Or if you use active pickups, you can cut the signal. I set mine at minimum. Not that I have a particular high output uh, pickup in my bass, but I simply prefer the sound that way. And if it's boosted, the popping sound is just too much for my taste. I really enjoy the presence, the punch, and the evenness of this optical compressor. It reminds me of Tony Levin's sound in Peter Gabriel's Sledgehammer album, which I adore. Both the sound of the bass and the album. So let's check out the compressor and how it blends with the preamp. <laughs> And here's another example of using the compressor to level the signal, especially with loud slapping and soft finger playing. In 
the next song, we turn the volume of the bass guitar two thirds down and the tone knob all the way down. So even if the compressor and gain knob are turned all the way up or almost all the way up, you do not hear that much effect going on, but a lot of warmth and a deeper growl from the drive section. So you might be wondering what the LPF and notch knobs are for. LPF stands for low pass filter. And what it does basically is cut the high end saturation to make it less aggressive and high pitched. The notch filter is a cut function with a narrow cue at around 400 Hz, giving the sound a warmer, ampeg-ish type of character. Along with the LPF, you clearly have the impression that you are playing through a bass amp. I really do not feel the need to play through a cap sim with this preamp, which keeps the signal chain simple and pure, in a way. So now that you have a better idea of what the compressor, the LPF and the notch filters do, let me just tell you that the bass knob cuts or boosts the 80 Hz frequencies, low mids at 250 Hz, great for cleaning up a boomy or boxy sound or adding a vintage type of warmth. High mids at our 750 Hz, which is the perfect frequency to cut through a mix. And highs are at five kilohertz, which is great to add clarity and pick attack, for example. Now for my impressions. I'll start by saying that I would have liked to see a pre or post DI option or even two separate DIs. Why not? Also, I personally keep on wishing for an effects loop with a blend knob and a face switch post EQ, just in case I want to throw in a cap sim, a chorus or a reverb or whatever. But most of us bass players couldn't care less about an effects loop, honestly. So the biggest selling point about this pedal, apart from having a super clean DI with a great signal level and the fact that it's a fantastic tone shaping tool is that the compressed signal runs parallel to the preamp and you can blend them together. This means that you can fool around with the dynamics of the drive section while maintaining a leveled and punchy clean sound. So this is definitely a game changer. I don't know if others have done it or do it, but here you have it. It sounds pro. 
The other feature of this pedal is its headroom, which is basically how easy and how much margin there is to play around with dynamics. This is due to the fact that it runs internally on 33 volts and allows us to throw other saturation pedals in front of it while reducing the risks of unwanted signal clipping. So we will end this video with two examples. First with the Dr. Cable Chernobyl Big Muff type of fuzz and second with the Jupiter FX Jive in front of it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments section what you think about this pedal and what is your favorite preamp pedal. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.